Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatu fillah continuing on with our advices for the student of knowledge by Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al-Wasabi rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatan wasi'ah uh, he was giving beautiful advice uh, to the student of knowledge or anyone who wants to traverse the path of knowledge uh, and we were last discussing the importance of sitting in the gathering of righteous people and avoiding the gatherings of uh, people of sharr and evil and the people of innovation the people of uh, bid'ah and ahwa you know the people of desires and bid'ah and we also talked about prior to the sitting uh, that the shaitan, as Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions, the shaitan comes in uh, two ways, in essence. Through your shahwat and through your shubahat. Through your shahwat, through your desires, and through your shubahat, through the doubtful means. So this is uh, the ways that the even the hisbeen, those people of uh, desires and bid'ah, of the various groups and sects, and as the Sheikh mentioned, he mentioned some of the contemporary groups I don't say they're sects, I say they are groups, which is a bit different being a Hizbi group versus a sect. And, and we'll talk about that really briefly about what, what we're talking about when we talk about the difference. Uh, so he mentioned those Hizbi groups, and these are usually contemporary groups like Ikhwan uh, al Jamaat al-Tabliq, Jamaat al-Takfir al-Hijra, uh, Boko Haram, ISIS, Al-Shabaab, and... Uh, Al Qaeda, all of these, uh, those last ones I mentioned are takfiri groups, jama'at, uh, jama'at al Hizb uh, Tahrir, and so many others, so many various groups, which differs from a sect. And this is a, a dhabit that I uh, benefited from Sheikh Sali Ali Sheikh, that he mentioned this. And that the difference between a sect and a uh, group, uh, a Hizbi group, the difference is this. <clears throat> when we talked about Jamaat Tabliq, we talked about Akhwan al-Muslimin, and to a greater or lesser extent, some of those Tekfiri groups, generally, especially Akhwan al-Muslimin and Jamaat Tabliq, they don't necessarily unite on a particular Aqidah, but rather they have a Minhaj. So they unite on an, under an umbrella called the Khwana Muslimin, which has, uh, you know, their political orientation that they want to reform societies, Muslim and non-Muslim societies, through uh, their political activism and their various ways of social and political reform, and that they have certain principles that they unite upon. And one of the principles is that they unite. Uh, they call all the groups together to unite upon those things they agree upon and leave off the things that they uh, have division upon. And so that means uh, uh, a tekfiri can sit with them, uh, someone who is a, a Shia, someone who is, you know, even who has a Salafi Aqidah, that they all can be under the same umbrella as long as they don't mention those things which cause controversy between them. Okay? Jamaat Tablik also has a sim similar uh, thing because you'll see that when Jamaat Tablik is giving Dawah, they want to stay away from anything controversial. They just want to make sure they stick with their six principles. <coughs> Even Tawheed for them is too controversial to talk about Tawheed uh, al ibadah in depth or Tawheed, meaning Tawheed al uluhiya uh, They might uh, talk about some of the divine sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps, but really they stick with Rububiyyah. You know, the lordship of Allah. Allah created us. Allah provides for us. Allah sustains us. Have a sahih. That is beautiful. And that is tawheed a rububiyyah. But that alone is not sufficient. That alone is not sufficient for a Muslim to believe, nor is it sufficient uh, to uh, uh, as a tariqah for da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, you have to clarify to the people that also that means... So Tawheed al-Rububiyyah yastalzibu Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah That Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Necessitates that you then go on to only worship Allah alone That all the du'a, 
all the sacrifice of the animals, all those things that are acts of ibadah, they only go to Allah Azza wa Jal. You tawakal, Allah. You make salat, to Allah. You supplicate, to Allah. You make hajj, for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the acts of ibadah is to Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is tawheed al-ibadah. So that jama'ah, may have different groups. You may have some, as Shaykh Namukbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, he mentioned about Jama'at al tabliq in his book, Makhraj, uh, Makhraj min al-Fitna. Uh, he mentioned that you'll find one, uh, you know, an elder from amongst their Jama'at who's been making khuruj for more than 20 years and still committing shirk al-Akbar, you know, still maybe going to the graves, supplicating to the graves and stuff, showing that jahil is also a characteristic generally of their jama'ah. Yes, they have some who studied and some who are, you know, uh, uh, you know, coming out of, uh, you know, that are diobandi or whatever, and they might be a talib al-ilm from the, you know, coming out of their, their uh, Daru Ulum uh, institutes around the world. And they may have some, some knowledge. And with that being the case, you'll find the same <coughs> menhaj and methodology and, of course, their own aqidah with that. So being diobundi is more of a sect, whereas a jama'at will be like jama'at tabliq. A group will be like jama'at tabliq. So I kind of got off top topic and went a little bit more in depth than I wanted to, but uh, hopefully that is something that we can benefit from and be clear about. Likewise, just to, to clarify, for example, uh, the Khawarij, that's an original sect, that's a, a sect, versus a group, a jama'ah, a hizb. Although, in general, they follow their hizbiya, but they are different in that they are, they are united, the Khawarij are united on a particular creed, and that is takfir for the major you know, sahib al-kabira, or rebelling against the ruler, and other sifat that the Khawarij have in their extremism. Those are those are issues of uh, aqidah and otherwise, and minhaj, or, and you know, methodology of understanding the text, and as far as a way of their dawah, those are all combined to make that a sect. For example, the sect of, you know, the various Sufi sects. They're not really a his, so to speak, but they have turq, you know, they have various paths of uh, Sufism. And those uh, sects, those are sect, sects, that they have a particular aqidah that unites them. Okay, Jamaat al-Ahbash, they are a sect, but they also have uh, elements of a hizb, you know, of a, of a contemporary group. But in fact, they are a sect, you know, they are Sufis, but they just have a, a particular uh, leader, you know, so they combine both of those traits of being a, a, a sect and kind of being a, a, a contemporary group. Uh, and so those are some things to beware of and be aware of. Uh, so the Sheikh, he said, there is no God except the law. How many righteous youth memorized the Quran and excelled in knowledge of the Sunnah and were ruined by the groups of, uh, of the Hizbiyun with their false promises? And they will be asked before Allah the Almighty soon about that misguidance. Allah is sufficient for us and the greatest protector. So it shows us the importance of being away from innovative groups and sects. But again, we need something to help us, some principles to help kind of guide us to what is the correct way and what is incorrect. Who is Who are these mubtadiyah? Who are these innovators that we need to avoid? And who are these Sunnis that we need to adhere to? And some of the Salaf, uh, some of the statements from Ahl Sunnah, for example, our Shaykh, he mentions, he says about as far as how a person uh, is authenticated as a Sunni, you know, that they're on the path of Ahl Sunnah. He says, so he said that a person is not truly a person from Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah will jama'ah. 
even after they agreed to all of their usul in knowledge and action until they distanced themselves from the people of desires and innovations and their statements, you know, and their, their viewpoints, their ideology. So, for example, someone can have the general aqeed of Ahl Sunnah, but then yet they they have the, they are melted in with the Khwarij. All the people around them are takfiris, and they actually listen to their arguments, and they immerse themselves in their uh, ittiqad, and, 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 uh, and in their, uh, their, their ideology, and they more or less embrace parts of it. So this person is not truly a person from Ahl Sunnah. So this shows us the importance of being with Ahl Sunnah and avoiding the people of desires. And from the Dawabit, and there are so many uh, narrations of the Salaf, so many books, and I wanted to bring some of them, but for the sake of time, I think we'll leave off. But we'll leave with one statement of Imam al Babahari, Rahmatullah Rahmatul Wasiyah, one of our Salaf, one of the uh, scholars of the Hanbali Madhab, you know, after Imam Ahmed, and he said, and uh, this is actually a statement of uh, Abdullah bin Mubarak, Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasiyah, that was uh, related or narrated by Imam Barbahari, Rahmatullahi. He said, and this is talking about the, the the one of the some of the. Uh, the Dabit Sahib al Bidah, Sahib al Sunnah. You know, these are the, the, the criterion for the person of Ahl Sunnah. He said, Al Asl Ithnain wa Sunain Hawa Arba Ahwa Femin Havi al Arba al Ahwa Tashu'abat Al Ithnan wa Sunain Hawa Al Qadariya Wal Murjia Wa Shia wal khawarij faman qadara uh, faman qadama abu abu bakr wa umar wa uthman wa ali ala ashab rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa lam yatakallam fil baqin illa bi khair wa da'a lahum fa khad kharaja min tushay min tushay awlahu wa akhiruhu so imam bab uh, Babahari related this statement on Abdullah bin Mubarak who said that the asl, the origin is the 72 sects as is mentioned in the uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the hadith of iftiraq uh, he said that the 72 hawa, he mentioned hawa like desires and this means basically the sects you know that they followed their desires he said four, it, they come down to four basic uh, types, if you will. They fall under four main categories of bid'ah, of, of creed. All those divisions, they fall under these four general categories. He said uh, the first is, and then from there they split. He said uh, the first is the qadriya, you know, those who, uh, you know, were either excessive in the in the with regards to the issue of the qadr or they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm was lacking and he uh, didn't uh, decree uh, everything in the and, and the uh, and the and that he was limited in his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala that's one of the uh, aqwal of the, uh, the qadriya and then also the murjiya those people who take iman who take uh actions from Iman. They basically say Iman is in the heart, or Iman is uh, statements of the tongue, or both, or all kind of variations of that, but the Shahid with the Murjia is that they believe that Iman, that uh, Iman doesn't fluctuate, it's either full or there's no Iman, and they believe that uh, Iman, uh, that uh, Amal, that deeds are not a part of Iman. And then you have the Shia, which the various Shia, and then so he gave some of the Dawabit for that. And then the Khawarij, the Khawarij who make take theater for the major sins and go against the Muslim rulers. Uh, and so he, he mentions that those who uh, give preference to Abu Bakr, meaning as, as in, in 
in fadl, in, 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 in superiority over the rest of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala, and as the Khalifa, and Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, uh, with this tartib, with this, uh, this order, uh, over gives them that preference over the rest of the uh, companions of the Prophet وسلم, and doesn't speak anything ill, you know, bad about the rest of the Sahaba and supplicates for them uh, then they have they have uh, departed or they are not from uh, the Shia in any way. Okay, so that's the Shahid. And then he mentions as far as the other sects, he talks about the those people who say if if they say that iman is according to statements and actions, and of course that's also those actions are actions of the heart, then they are not from the Murjia. And that they believe that iman increases and decreases, then they are not from the Murjia. And then also those people who believe in praying behind the righteous and wicked leaders and making jihad with them and uh, do not believe against going the, against the leaders with the sword and supplicates for them that they be rectified then they are not in any shape or form from the Khawarij. So it's very important so he gives these kind of thawabit so that we have an idea of who is Ahl Bidah and, and some general categories on how to avoid and some of the principles in Asul of Ahl Sunnah. So this is a very powerful statement if we were to break it down and spend more time with it and go to uh, go in, go in depth into it and benefit from it. It's an important uh, asl from the Asul of Ahl Sunnah. And that goes back to what the Sheikh is talking about. And I think we're going to kind of stop here with this uh, advice and then we'll go to the next one after this in the next sitting. And that is the Shahid. It goes back to uh, being in the gatherings of Ahl Sunnah, meaning the the righteous uh, that are on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, calling to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Sabil al the the Minhaj of the Salaf al Salih, and of course they are a, the a people of benefit. Those are the people of benefit. Be away from the people of innovation and desires and the wicked people and the people who call you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad